All right, so this next file is um, a file that contains a number of models. And the first model here is this hand model, which is kind of like a monster hand that we're going to retopologize. And if I turn on the topology, you can see that uh, we get very uniform, a uniform layout of nothing but triangles. So let's go ahead and turn that off for now. So uh, this model right here is something that could be coming from a uh, stereolithography uh, source, it could be an STL file, it could be coming from a library like TurboSquid which has a lot of models that are just raw triangles, you know, very uh, ununiform as well. It could be coming from a scan, uh, it could be coming from a spline conversion. If you have spline surfaces that get tessellated, uh, you might get a surface like that from somewhere like there. Um, there are lots of legacy ways of getting ending up with a model that you might have to retopologize for a mud box. But you know, the point is that there are lots of different sources. So what I'm going to do here, and this is really kind of um, um, a way to organize your thoughts in terms of retopologizing as well as reducing uh, geometry, decimating triangles. Uh, there are two menus in here that we're going to be looking at, Reduce Mesh and Retopologize. Now, Retopologize, you have to actually select a piece of geometry for, so let's go ahead and go to Select Object. If it's not selecting, make sure it's uh, set to Paint. There you go. And it's picking, and then it turns green. And it also has a history of all the nodes that I have applied to it. And you can see there's four here that have specific settings to each. Reduce Mesh just brings up the dialog that allows you to reduce the mesh to a lower number of triangles. So a couple things. So we're going to start with retopology first. So you could do something like a tries to quads, and we need quads because it's mud box and quads subdivide well. Um, so we can go from tries to quads and just do a raw conversion. We could also go from tries to quads with guides and then we have two options. If we're using guides, these guides are curves and these are the exact same curves that we have and that we've been using for other things. If you want to draw a curve on the surface and then project a stroke along that curve onto the surface of let's say paint or sculpted material then you can do that. We can use those same curves to kind of guide the topology of, of this hand. But then there are two kinds of guides or constraints. They're actually called constraints. A soft constraint or a hard constraint. And a soft constraint is essentially a way to generally give the, the topology a direction. Uh, a hard constraint will actually allow you to use a curve to define where you want an edge loop to be laid down. So you could be very specific that way. All right, so let's look at the curves first. Um, so let's start with some of the uh, curve tools that we uh, added uh, before we start getting into retopo or reducing. So the first thing here is obviously we've been able to do this uh, for some time is the create curve tool. And what's really important to remember here is that the size of the brush determines how many vertices it lays down on the surface. So if I have a very small brush, I can have very tight turns because we get lots of verts. If I have a larger brush, you can see that it barely draws a curve segment. It's much more difficult to get very tight turns and so on. You can see how that kind of behaves that way. So that's always something to be aware of. Okay, so back to our curve uh, tools. So we have uh, create curves. We can uh, grab a curve. Obviously, you might want to show this and just kind of reposition a curve and have it be a little more accurate or maybe move it over a little bit like that. Um, if we have a smaller uh, brush here and we have some kinks in there we can go into smooth curve and you kind of soften that out soften that up a little bit by creating a slightly larger brush and, until we get what we want we can also go in here and erase parts of curves now so if I go in and um, drag over this portion you can see I can take this back to wherever I want maybe I want just that I can go in here get a little closer maybe erase portions of this curve as well we don't need this maybe take out a little bit more of this and so we have something like this. Uh, we can also go ahead and define a curve loop. And by selecting that tool, you get some mirror and plane 
uh, attributes that you can start to control. So for example, one of the things that you might want to do is define curve loops around the fingers uh, by simply selecting it, leaving mirror off, setting plane to free, and then click drag, and you can see that that it now becomes a loop all the way around. Now sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to see where this is going or how it's affecting the back of that finger because we may not see the details on the back of that finger. Like down here we may have some bumps or spikes and we don't know how that curve is going to end up. So we might want to go ahead and get into this new uh, preset or preference as well under render which allows you to set this to see through and it actually is just basically wire mode what we have in Maya as wire mode. Uh, we have in Mudbox and so we can see these curve loops without having to really spin around the model and very quickly kind of lay down a bunch of these loops as guides. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this back to uh, one-sided. Say OK. I might want to go in here and use some of those curve loops to uh, lay down guides that look more like that if I wanted to instead of building a hand maybe build a glove and maybe there's some sort of geometric detail that has to run in the direction of the metacarpals of of this hand then you can do that that way and here too undoing and redoing is much faster alright so once the curves are laid out uh, we can say or we can keep these for later they'll show up in the object list at the very bottom now you can see that they're my curves right there and we want to now go in and retopologize so let's select this model. I'm going to go in here and select the object and under mesh retopologize I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and open up a new operation I'm going to give this a new name and the operation shows up under hand one. I'm also going to give the actual mesh a name uh, which also will be hand one so it's easy to track which belongs to which and then we're going to go ahead and set the uh, uh, target base face count. Now this is a very important control in that that will become the approximate number of faces the base mesh will consist of and so there's something that seems counterintuitive but makes perfect sense um, the lower this number is the more subdivisions it has to create if sculpted detail is turned on so if you turn on sculpted detail the retopologized model will be very close to the hand that you have the original model so what it wants to do, what you're asking it to do, is essentially recreate all the details. So what we set here is a target base face count of 200. It'll subdivide however many times it needs to subdivide to be able to get to that level of detail. If my base mesh is going to be much higher in resolution, it may have to subdivide less. I may end up with fewer levels. So that's kind of the consequence of doing that, of manipulating this value. We also have a face uniformity, a very uniform faces, or just optimized, which you can set here or somewhere in between. I'm going to just leave this set to 1. And in this case, I don't want to use these curves to control the topology. So you can see they all turn to green. If I turn them on, they all turn to soft constraints, the orange constraints. So let's leave this turned, uh, turned off for now. And let's go ahead and copy the curves as well. Now we don't have to select the model. We could just hit retopologize. On the bottom left, you can see that it goes through a number of steps, reducing the geometry, uh, regenerating the tangents, creating the new topology. And at some point when this is done, uh, we're going to get our new hand and it automatically hides the original hand. So we're going to go ahead and get a quad mesh with a number of subdivision levels. There it is. Base face is 370 subdivided to level 5. So if we look down here at the bottom, we get hand 1. If we go ahead and actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, there it is, hand one. And I can now move this out of the way to see what this looks like. And if I turn on the original mesh, I can look at them side by side. Let's go ahead and deselect that. There we go. Now you can see that we get pretty much the same level of detail on both geometries. Now, because I also copied the curves, I can retopologize my retopologized model again with different values if I wanted to. I'm just going to do these separate because I want to show you the differences between them. So I'm going to go back to my uh, mesh. I'm going to go back into my retopologize. I'm going to create another retopo node. We're going to go ahead and call that uh, hand 2. And also at 200, a value of 200, same values here. Now I'm going to start using some curves. 
And so the curves are uh, turned on for this model. And in this case, I want to use some curves as soft constraints and some as hard constraints. So let's go ahead and deselect this. You can see the orange ones are all soft constraints. If I right click over a curve, you can uh, make that particular curve a hard constraint simply by doing that. Or we can go in here and say make all of them hard. Let's go in here and make all hard or we make them all soft and that way we can kind of control where the where some very important edge loops are going to end up. So let's go ahead and make this one a hard one, uh, this one as well, maybe this one here, we'll make that a hard constraint and let's just kind of leave it with uh, maybe this one also. All right, so we have some hard constraints set up, some soft constraints set up. We're going to go ahead and uh, copy the curves again and retopologize uh, once again. Once we uh, start this process, um, again, it's going to go through all the steps. And what it will do is it will use my red curves to place uh, edge loops right on the geometry. And it actually does that at the highest level. It wouldn't make any sense to do that at the base level. So all constraints are essentially applied to the highest level, subdivision level, that it's recreating on my retopode model. So let's go ahead and uh, grab this, this right here, and we'll move this over. And I'm going to compare this to the second model, these two, and see what differences we can see. So let's go ahead and deselect that real quick. And I'll turn this on, and we can select both I, if we look over here, you can see that the topology really doesn't run along that curve. It's completely ignored, and we did. We completely ignored it. Over here, it's forcing to run the topology along these curves right in here. You can see what that looks like all the way down to the bottom. I can go ahead and grab this and maybe uh, step this down a bit if you want to. You can see that a little, a little more clearly. Now, it doesn't give you an accurate preview of how things are constraining and how the curves are applied to the high-res geometry. Because if I take this down to the base mesh, you can see that the shape of the curve is distorting, right? If I take it back, back to the highest level, I get the actual shape of the curves. So that's kind of how that works. Plus, I get all the detail. So between the automated uh, uh, feature that allowed me to retopo without guide curves and then the one with guide curves, um, you can see that the, the level of detail and the way it replicates the original model is pretty accurate. 